How's it going everyone? I hope you had a awesome week. Last week I made this. It's a shotgun condenser and it's almost finished. I just need to get ferals on either end of it. I also think that perhaps you guys are a little bit sick of watching me braise so I've got a new way to put ferals on the end of this and I want to try it out. Let's see if it works, huh? Well that was fast. Looks like it did a pretty decent job too. I wonder if it works for cleaning. Uh, <laughs> did you guys see that? What the hell? Um, where did that go? Woohoo! Oh shit! Uh, you guys need to check this out. Uh, have a look. Ah, there it is. I told you guys I found it. It um, it seems to be attached to something now too. And there's also some vinegar. Guess we're doing the cleaning run today. Hey guys, what's up? If you're new here, this channel is still it and it's all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's something you're into, if you think you wanna get into using these things, have a look around, check everything out, and if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button down below. All right guys, so finally, as you can see, I've got this thing put together and in semi-operational order. For those of you that are following the build a little closer, you probably noticed the extra little piece up top here. I just added that to accommodate uh, the coil for when it's in CCVM mode. And right now the coil is actually sitting inside here. I just pushed it down inside um, so that I can clean it with the rest of the cleaning run. I have switched the two three kilowatt elements out for two two kilowatt elements. And the reason for that is I just want to be able to run on standard uh, household or shed hold electric circuits without having to stress about putting a high amp circuit in. So right now I don't have a controller but I either have 2 kilowatts or 4 kilowatts so I'm thinking that should be absolutely fine for the cleaning runs. So right now I've already got this charged up with the water and it is up almost to boiling. Uh, the plan is as soon as I finish talking here to drop the vinegar in and start cranking this thing up. I think like most things in distilling, this is one of those things that there's no one right way to do it. I've read a bunch of different guides, tips, discussions, threads on forums about exactly what to do here. I decided to go with a guide that was kind of near the more cautious side of things, the more thorough side of things. And the main reason for that is because one, I'm new to this and two, I'm new to brazing. So there's probably excess flux all over the place in there and I just want to be nice and safe about it. So the main guide that I'm following is was written by a Kiwi stiller. I'll chuck a link down below. Just so you know, the process that I'm following is kind of his tutorial. I'm going to run through it and share it with you guys today as well though. So like I alluded to before, the reason you want to clean your still before running it for real is that the build process is just, it, it's a little bit dirty. Like you're using flux, which is just straight up nasty. Um, and there's going to be all sorts of oxidized crap anywhere that things got hot, especially on the inside, on little pieces like inside the, the condenser here where you can't get to to clean properly. So you're going to want to clean all that stuff out rather than drinking it and having it in your product. Seems kind of obvious, right? So the first step that I did and the Kiwi Stiller suggests, which I'm not going to show you now, is every piece as it was finished being made, it was soaked in an acid bath. The main reason for that is to deal to some of that flux. The flux is basic and obviously putting it in an acid solution is going to help neutralize it. The second step is the vinegar run, which is what we're doing here today. Using vinegar is good for two reasons. First of all, once again, it's an acid and we're going to be able to use it at high temperature now. So it's going to do an even better job of neutralizing any flux. The second advantage of using vinegar is that because as a vapor, it's not combustible, it's nice and safe. So we can crank this up to full speed, have steam pouring out all over the place, and we don't have to worry about that, like we would if it was alcohol. Because we can't do that with alcohol, there's a chance that some of the areas in the still may not get reached by the steam, because like for example, down the bottom of the condenser, by the time everything gets down here, it's pretty much liquid, so anything on the top side is gonna be left untouched. Using the vinegar lets us get into all those nooks and crannies and absolutely blast it out. So the basic idea is we charge the boiler with a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water and we run it nice and hot and hard to push steam through absolutely everything for about 20 minutes. 
So after about 20 minutes, we're going to turn the condenser on and run it like we would in normal pot still mode. That's going to give me a chance to see how this condenser works and see if it's capable of knocking down all fill 4 kilowatts, which is going to be pretty interesting. And that's also going to give us a really good opportunity to check the vapor leaks anywhere in the still. Because once again, by the time we get to using alcohol, we want to make sure that it's airtight or vapor tight, right? So enough talk, let's chuck some vinegar in here and see how we go. So like I said, I'm aiming for right around 50-50 vinegar and water. And as you can probably see, I had to chuck some flour paste on the base of that column too, because I'm still waiting on a special gasket for that. This part was really interesting to me, seeing how the heat sort of slowly moved up the column. Remember, this is all new to me, so yeah, for me it was pretty fascinating. Uh, like I said before, that little bit extra was just added to accommodate the coil. And as you can see, there is uh, some flour paste here and there at different parts of the still. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Just to let you know, I've put a cap held on with flour paste at the top of the column. Uh, and the reason for this is when I'm doing the vinegar run, I just want to be able to blast it at full speed without having to worry about knocking vapor down at the top with the coil, which is something you may want to think about for any other vapor management stills as well. Just remember that just because you're not using alcohol and using vinegar doesn't mean you don't have to worry about creating a closed system by keeping the valves closed and stuff like that. The pressure building up in here with the steam is going to be exactly the same. It's just not going to be flammable. So the next thing I'm going to do, which is probably next week, will be the third step in the cleaning process, which is a sacrificial alcohol run. But enough of that for now. That's next week's video. So if you want to see the alcohol cleaning run rather than the vinegar cleaning run, check in next week. I figured it was probably a decent idea to insulate the boiler and not long after that I started getting a little bit of action out of the spout and before long it was absolutely humming. That's a lot of steam. The base of the column was leaking a little bit but I knew that was just because I didn't have a gasket in there so I really wasn't too worried about it seeing as it's only vinegar. The vinegar cleaning run is chugging away really nicely over there. I've decided to give it a little bit of extra time simply because I'm in no rush. I just wanted to do a good job. In the meantime, I've got something else I want to do. A little while back, my wife gave me a suggestion on something I should really buy for the shed. And anytime I get given the okay to buy something to come out here, I tend to jump on it. But it was actually a really good idea. She tends to have those. And she suggested that I should get a fire extinguisher. Here's the thing with safety equipment and all the experience I've had with any safety kits, the only time they are any good is if you can find the damn things. And the thing is, when you need a piece of safety equipment, you're not going to be thinking entirely clear headed. So I wanted to mount this somewhere insanely obvious, somewhere that you walk past every day. Every single person that walks into this shed is going to see this, whether that's the first time they've been here or not. I'm going to mount it right here on the wall and the entry to the shed is literally two feet in that direction. I'm going to chuck this up really quick while the vinegar runs still doing its thing. As soon as I'm finished with this, I'll turn the condenser on and we'll see how that works. Looking forward to that. Alright, so time to give this condenser a test. Right now I have it set up to the hose outside as the water supply. So I'm just going to nip off out there and I'm going to leave the video running and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, I just turned that on super low because I was a little bit concerned about starting it while I wasn't here. Looks like it's knocked down most of that already and I'm, I don't even think the condenser's full yet. Water's just started coming out of the other end now. Uh, I do see a little bit of vapor still. Um, so I'm just going to bump that hose up and see what happens. So I actually haven't turned the water up at all yet. I think perhaps there was a few air bubbles in the condenser that still needed to empty out. Um, that is cold. I'm going to guess off the top of my head, mm, maybe like 10 degrees Celsius or something like that. So the more discerning among you may have noticed a bit of a drip in that last shot. Uh, it was coming from just here. Uh, so I'm not worried about that right now. I think that, yeah, that just needs a little bit of a 
I tighten just the way the hose is hanging, it's just going to keep pulling it undone. So not a problem, I'm not going to worry about it now. What I am thinking about though is, does that look like 4 kilowatts to you guys? I've always had a little bit of a problem getting a rolling boil when I'm brewing with these two elements. And I've kind of always wondered if perhaps they're not exactly what they said they were. So that is the output from the condenser. It is fairly warm, I'm not gonna say it's hot. Once again, just an absolute guesstimate. I'm gonna say maybe, maybe 45 degrees, if that. Well, the last thing I wanna do before I shut this all down and give it a nice rinse out with fresh water is just check for any leaks. I've done a good visual check everywhere and I can't see any more steam anywhere and I can't see any drips other than this little fella here. I'm gonna run a mirror over everything and the idea is that if there's vapor coming out anywhere along this still, it's gonna fog the mirror up. Make sure you use a glass mirror though guys. All right, so looks like we're airtight. So all up from the time that steam started pouring out of that spout there, this has been running for about an hour now. So I think that's more than enough time. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna break it all down and I'm gonna give it a rinse. If you're trying to figure out how to do your own cleaning run, I hope this helped and don't forget to check those comments. They will help you out, I promise. So after breaking a few of the parts down, I realized that it wasn't quite as clean as I had hoped it would be. So I decided to use the hot vinegar to soak all the parts overnight. This is the next morning. You can see the work it's done on the outside of the copper. And use a little tool I whipped up to give it a good scrub inside as well. This thing works really, really well. I'll talk about it and show you how I made it in another video sometime. All right team, so everything has been soaking in that vinegar solution overnight. I've just pulled it out and given it a really good scrub and things are looking a whole lot cleaner, much more in line with what I was hoping to see last night. So that took a little bit more time, but you know what? Sometimes things take time and I'm totally cool with that. Thanks a bunch for watching the video and hanging out with me. I really appreciate all your help and comments. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you really like the video, have a think about subscribing and I'll catch you guys next week. See ya.